This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Humble, Texas, and this is October the 19th, 2022. Our midweek Wednesday Bible study is entitled, How Can We Receive the Thoughts of God? How Can We Receive the Thoughts of God? Now we look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, 1 through 13. Now that's going to be our text. Because what we're having is severe battles throughout the brotherhood in all different areas, different countries. As always, it has been. And so, men are twisting the word of God. I happened to talk to a guy this morning. And man, he, as I listened to him, I was like, bless his heart, my goodness. If I were not with God, my mind would be expounding and obliterated. Thank the Lord, I knew the truth. But the idea is we had a good conversation. Hopefully he'll follow us online. Uh, but nevertheless, truth was shared. He had some very good questions. And they were all answered with Bible answers. And that's glory to the Father above. So Isaiah 55 verse 1. Hold, everyone that thirsted, come you to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without Price. Now, the Lord here, as we're going to do some expository on this first 13 verses, deals with the fact is that this is not about buying real wine and milk. Some of them may say, well, how would you know that, Ozan? Because verse 2, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? So, you know, so who's going to buy something that thinks it's bread and it's not bread? I mean, you can see what bread is. So now we know, okay. What they are consuming and what they are eating and what they are purchasing as far as themselves being made merchandise. And that's what uh, Peter talked about in his epistle. They make merchandise of you. These people are purchasing the thoughts of men perpetrated as bread from heaven, which Jesus said he is. And they are spending money for the Lord says it's not bread and your labor for that which satisfied not. Because their works, all that they're doing, the idolatries that oozed into the false doctrine entered in into the hearts of the saints as they were flung around. They were only flung out because they were not faithful to the law. They began to uh, worship stones and stocks and uh, they began to worship groves uh, under every green tree wherever they could find a setup where they could carve out this grove. And so that's why they were flung out. So this labor they did was for nothing so they hearken diligent to me and eat you that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness incline your ear now here goes the proof text he's talking about information share and come unto me here and your soul shall live. so now we get more detail proving my statement he's not talking about real food he's talking about the things that you hear you will live by these things, but you're purchasing it because you're giving yourself into false things that are not the bread of life. He said, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I've given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Now watch how he shifts in this David mercies that are going to be given is going to be talking about Jesus and so now the thought of the lesson is how do we see the thoughts how do you know Ozan what God is thinking you can't read his mind amen because of uh, the term incline your ear now we can prove information to show that the ear is like a mouth but the purchase requirement is for you to give your allegiance your life to this information and so Job talks about the ear to prove the Bible is consistent let's look at Job or I think at Isaiah 55 and 3 and go to Job if you will chapter number 12 and we'll look at verse number 11 he says doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat so the ear tries the word and the mouth tastes me. So, so now he's like, okay, well, the Lord's talking about words. So this ear becomes like a mouth where it tests and tries words. I hear them, 
Is this the thought of God? How do we know? It's in his book. And so one of the things I was sharing with the gentleman this morning is I told him, I said, you have to have faith in the word, in the one book, not books, the Bible. You have to have faith that what you're reading. I said, just like you hear my voice, I hear you. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I say, now you know what God thinks when you read his words. And so uh, he says, first, uh, number five, behold, thou, would, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Now, as you begin to hear, here's the problem with when we're reading the Bible. In between, thoughts come out where you have the speaker speaking for the Lord. The Lord himself will speak. That's why the man asks of Ethiopia, is he talking about himself at this time or some other man? Because he knows he's a student of the Bible, but he's getting lost in Isaiah 55, I mean, Isaiah 53. And it's understood because it's vague. And so he says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, a nation that knew thee not shall run unto thee because of the law of thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he had glorified thee. Now he's going to glorify Israel. The commander is going to be Jesus. But the idea is he's going to glorify them and the nation is going to run to them. Now this only happens on Pentecost. You do not see anybody. Right? You see people coming to Israel, beating them down, taking their land, slinging their children, killing their families because they are under extreme duress. When you see them with the Roman government, they are allowed, as Rome did other governments, you pay me my tax money, you can do things, just don't put your hands on no Roman without checking with us and following our law. You can do what you want with your own people. And so the idea is you do not see Israel ever glorified until the day of Pentecost. That's when they're glorified. Say, I know because look at the history. They, from the time they are flung out, they are destroyed. Even when Nehemiah is going back to rebuild the temple, it is not. He tells them, we're not trying to rebuild the nation again. Because that's what he's accused of. Tobias and Sanbud is accusing him of trying to rebuild the nation. He said, we're building the house of my God. And Cyrus told us it was okay. And so they go back and check the Chronicles and it says, okay. He said, we're just trying to build a house of worship. Because we still are under the penalty of sin. And we want to rebuild this house of worship. They are not being put together back as a nation physically. To have a king like the literal David. And so this is how we know when you see David. Now we start seeing metaphors now popping up. And so you see in Ezekiel. David will lead. Man David is dead. And now we link together the consistency of the scriptures. This David is Jesus. And that's the thing we have to accept in the heart. David, David is definitely, definitely never going to be raised from the dead. Until the day that we are all raised together. So it says seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. The message goes on. This is why when you look at uh, Romans 10, you see Paul saying, Isaiah said, they did hear the gospel, but it's not being mixed with faith. The good news is now. It's good news is preached continually about the hope of Israel. That the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And this is what you and I do for each other. Sometimes we get off on a point. We bump each other back on because we got the word, but we're not getting the thought. So we look up the meanings and we lie and say, okay, it can't mean. So sometimes a person tell you, it can't mean that, brother. And you go, yeah, 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 you're right. That's right. That's right. Because, okay, you start to eliminate by word meanings. The text is there, but you start, okay, well, let's eliminate. Okay, then it's got to be this because there's nothing left. And so he says here, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Why? Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The key word here is heavens. He's not talking about the sky. He's not talking about the solar system. He has an S. Continually unending is a gap. And the Lord is, Lord, I said, I have a ceiling on my thoughts. No, my thoughts, you will never be close to my thoughts. They are endless. And so therefore he says, I'm giving you instruction. What you need to do. 
forsake these wicked ways. And this is how all of us get back in line with the Lord. He says, verse 10, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth. That's what it says. You don't see the rain and snow come down and then it leap back up in the heaven. It come down and it waters this earth. Keeps it water. There are some places that get so much snow. God is so abundantly wise. They will tell you, we don't get, we get very little rain, but we get so much snow. Our city fathers have channeled it into a supersized reservoirs. And that's how we have no water all through the summer. Isn't that amazing? Without God, they die. There wouldn't be enough snow to make that water happen. So nevertheless, God is so good. So he says, uh, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the soil and bread to the eater. So you got to have a soil. He got a plant, but when it comes up, the person who eats the bread, everyone's blessed. So shall my word be that goeth out from out of my mouth, or forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So just as the rain and the snow comes down, it doesn't return void. It, it brings something up. So something's going to be birthed here. Righteousness. Righteous lives. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whether I sent it. Now also, when the word goes out, it causes destruction also. It causes destruction. Just like water can flood and destroy things. Mm -hmm. if, if the Lord is angry, that word will go out. So I said, well, his, his word going to come back and bring back a blessing. No, I didn't say that. He said the key. Here's where we blow it at. Here's where we blow it at. I believe Brother Frias mentioned something very important to us last, uh, a couple of weeks ago, when he said people see things secret as always a good thing. Uh, forgive me, a bad thing. But there are good things. See, there's good works that are secretly covered. And they will be unveiled too, and people will be glorified. It's not always just bad things. There's good things coming up that people do behind closed doors, no man will see. And there's bad things people do behind closed doors, no man will see. And at the appropriate time, they will be revealed. And so the Lord points out here, He says, The thing I sent it to do, it's your profit, the thing whereto I sent it. That's what He's saying. He's not saying it's going to come back good. He might, man, the Lord sent down a flood that will destroy your life. It was not right with him. Brother Fritz. Yes, you got a great lesson. Yeah, thank you, I just wanted to read uh, John 3, 8, where it Man. says, The wind blow where it listed, mm -hmm. and now here is the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goest. It says, So is everyone that is born uh, of the Spirit. And so when it comes to the description of someone that is born, baptized mm -hmm. of the Spirit, he's describing them like the wind. He's saying he's going to go where, where it wants to, where it lists where it, it listed. And so that's how the wind is. You know, it just moves in different directions. And so the directions that we move into is, is a spiritual. And so the carnal man doesn't know where it's going to go ne to next because it's carnal. It can't see the spiritual. And so when we go and describe the description of no instruments uh, being used because the Levites, they didn't know we were going to go there. There's like the wind. You don't know if it's going here or there. When it comes to women can't, uh, you know, be ministers or have a position or a post. They don't know they're going there because they, they're carnal. They look at equality and, and things of that nature from earth. So they're judging it from a carnal standpoint. And so he's describing that's how they are. They're like the wind. And so when you read Isaiah 55, as, as you're reading, he's going to from, he's giving us something carnal. Then he's describing it as spiritual. Uh, then he's describing something physical, but he's making a spiritual uh, comparison concerning the rain and the snow. Of course, that's a spiritual uh, understanding concerning his word and what it goes out to do sure. and so when it comes to those who are spiritual uh, that's how the saints are is that we like the wind where our communication is different where the world can understand it just like the wind can't be understood because right. it's going to move based on what the father and the son has told us uh, how to move so I just wanted to Oh, bless you, preacher. That's a great analogy. That's the analogy of the Lord. You, our brother is using the tool the Lord gave him to help us, and we see and understand that. You know, and like he said, that's why you can't, you, they can't keep up, brother. There's no way that you should ever feel the denomination wrong. They cannot overtake the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So God bless you, preacher. Now, we see here he says that, uh, 
For you shall go out, verse 12, with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountain and the hill shall break for before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. More metaphoric speech. Mm -hmm. He said, instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. So now instead of something that comes up to prick and, and cause pain, a fir tree comes. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And so this hope that's going to come up is now a thought of God. So when someone tries to say the church didn't begin in Jerusalem, you know what I'm saying? Man, the Lord's thoughts are going to tell us in advance where these things are going to come from. And our ear should be able to taste and see is this real bread? Is this the Lord's bread? Or is this man's nonsense that he's come up with? And so you must have the thoughts of God in your heart. If you don't, you will act upon your own thoughts. That's one part we want to show. Isaiah 65 and verse 1. And this, and this is why we've got to have the thoughts of God. The Lord forewarns us, do not teach people to Fear or respect me with your wisdom, your thoughts, or your ideas, your doctrine. Because he knows it's not going to last. It's like trying to put a monster up in a room, you know, and a person can see me walk, turn light on. Oh, man, it's th I thought it was a man. It's a bunch of food. And they come and tear it up and made a paper mache. It's ridiculous. So the Lord says, now you're not going to be able to use your thoughts to secure their heart. Isaiah 65, 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Once again, here's one of the thoughts, you know, mentioned and encouraged in the New Testament. I'm found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Now, here is Isaiah writing God. This is God speaking, but you'll hear the New Testament writers say, like, as Isaiah said, he was found, but he's talking about God. You see, because this is God saying my name, not Isaiah's name, my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. So the Israelites began to alter what God had told them. Wicked kings like Jeroboam, even in Israel, or weak kings like Jehoshaphat. And so the idea is that you start getting weak one minute, you're strong one minute, you're weak. This guy builds a navy and the Lord has to destroy his boats. He is set on helping Ahab's boy and the Lord has to destroy his boats. And so the idea is that the thoughts begin to shift. And so it says, a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. That sacrifice it in garden. Now they knew what a sacrifice will be. They go to a garden. Just to be rebellious. Some people don't understand. You know. Some people say. Well, you know. I couldn't make it to my church on Sunday. So I just went to one denominational church down the street. I just had to. You know. I'm not saying to do that regularly. You know. Say. I just had to hear something about Jesus. But no. 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 You sacrificed in a garden. Mm. You have to go to the place where the Lord say to burn the sacrifice. Yeah. And burn incense upon altars of brick. Why is that bad? Because that's not what the Lord said, burn the incense. Who will be doing this? The priest. Here's a notice on the priest got on. Which remain among the graves. Look at that. They hang out among dead stuff. What's going on? Man, it's going to be some good reading. Watch the Lord teach. And lodge in the monument. Look at that. Who does that? Who hangs around tombstones and dead bodies? Which eat swine's flesh. Now why is that important? Because at this time, that's an abomination. That's not supposed to eat the hog's flesh. So how does that apply to us today? Well, the idea is it, it, they're doing some physical things, ridiculous. But he's also pointing out, yeah, this is metaphoric. They're around dead stuff. Stones and stocks, false gods that are dead. And eating hog. So in between the physical, they're also eating False doctrine, they're consuming. Remember, the ear is consuming bread, that which is not bread. And they're paying for it, which is really sad. Uh, he says, and broth of abominable things in, is in their vessels. So that's also can be initially doing it physically, but then they're 
they're the vessel that has this foolishness in them. Their spirit is full of this nonsense. So this is how the Lord makes the story go along. You saw them doing some physical things like that because they, they did show honor to God by sacrificing the proper animal, going to the proper place. So these physical things are also attributed. It wasn't just that, oh, he's eating hog meat. Yeah, he's eating a doctrine. It's okay to eat hog meat. Verse 5, which say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. Now listen. Now listen. All right, now saints, come on. They're saying, you righteous, the Lord, eh, y'all stay away from me. Stand by yourself. Don't come near me. I'm holier than you. I'm holier. These are a smoke in my nose. I don't know how you feel about smoking your nose, but it's never pleasant. I'm going to talk about cigarettes. We're talking about smoke like something burning. And a fire that burning all day, just all day long. Can you imagine you walking somewhere and fire is all around you all day? I mean, it's, it's hot. He said, Lord, said, this is how I feel. Fire and smoke all in my nose all day. You know, you pass through smoke and you want to get out of there. This Lord said, this is how I feel. You smoke in my nose all day long. Your fire is burning. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep sight but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. I'll put, you know, you know when you hear the Lord say stuff like this, but I'll put, it, I'll put it right where you're going to fit it. I'm going to get it right where you're going to fit it. You're going to know this is yours, and you're going to claim it. You're going to own it because I'm bringing it to you for punishment. Your iniquities and iniquities of your fathers together, said the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountain. See, now we're getting into the specifics, but this is a doctrine taught. So this is a doctrine in their heart. And blaspheme me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work until their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one said, destroy it not. For a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I might not destroy them at all. So the Lord, Lord this stuff, you know, the Lord going to show up and show up. The Lord is not a drunken man. Man, he's not going to tear stuff up. Oh, he actually did this stuff on one of the children, like an ostrich. No. He says, I'm going to look and say, okay, hold on. Don't touch that one. And you know, he proved that when the angel was about to reach for the holy city of Jerusalem, when he was destroying and killing the people, the Lord said, stay thy hand. He said, hold on, stop right there. That's good enough. Don't touch the city. He stopped it. The Lord knows, okay, hold on, it's good here. Though hand joining hand, the guilty will not be punished. The hand joining hand, he's not going to accidentally hit a righteous. He's going to tag that which is not good. Amen. Where it's not. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritance, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is the hope of the church. Israel, Israel is never going to be comfortable physically. Matter of fact, after Pentecost, a few years later, he destroys the whole land and just tells them, get away. I don't want any of you anymore. I don't, I'm only keeping the land. That is never a hope. Israel is never going. The, the land that now is partial pieces left of rejected spots. This is another people. That, that's like people live in New York. They never going to get this piece physically, they get it spiritually. They are under duress on the Roman rule. We see that. I'm looking for a baby. Anybody up to two years old, I want them dead. Rachel is prophesied as crying because no more babies. Herod is killing everybody. And we have to understand that. So when does Israel get peace other than Pentecost? They get no peace until Pentecost. And that's a spiritual peace the Lord is promising them. Hagee is a liar. Israel will never have peace. The Lord knows what your thoughts are and mine. We must read his thoughts and make them our thoughts. That's what got them in trouble when they didn't do that. Isaiah 66 and verse 1. Got to read his thoughts. Got to make them our thoughts. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? Build me. And where is the place of my rest. Now the Lord said this initially in talking to David when he wanted to build him a house. Isaiah is repeating this information of what the Lord has said. For all those things hath mine hand made. 
Now, all those things have been said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. So the Lord says, I made everything, I've done all these things. He said, but the God that trembles at my word, the guy, and that will include women too, whose spirit is contrite. Spirit wants to be pure, wants to honor God. It's sorry for its sin. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. Look at the look at the men, look at the opposites of their thoughts. You got a guy that kills an ox. You know, an ox is a very, very, very expensive animal. Very much needed for riding through certain areas, for transportation. They use oxen to carry even their false god. But he says, he looks at that like, man, that ox, like, I killed a man. He, he, this ox is so critical. But look at this. He that sacrifices a lamb is a, he that cut off a dog's neck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so now the understanding shifts. You say, how y'all saying? Because you killing a lamb, your thoughts are opposite. That don't mean nothing. It does mean something. Because without the lamb, you cannot do the right sacrifice. Watch how, watch how he switches in the teaching. He then offered an oblation as if he offered swine. But he's showing the different snapshot. You got a guy that makes a big deal out of killing an ox. Like he cut a man here and all. You got another person that act like it ain't nothing to offer a sheep. You know why that's important to know it had to be a sheep? Because you find out if you didn't bring the right animal, you were in trouble with the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, you know, this thing, it is something. This person offering an oblation, he looks at it like it's swine's blood. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, man, what is this, man? You know, this don't mean nothing to me. That's what they told Malachi. They told Malachi. He, he judges everything alike. Why do we serve him anyway? These people in their heart, but Malachi in here to his ears, the Lord said this is what they're saying. That's why they begin to ask him, how do we rob God? They don't know the Lord has spoken to him and said, man, I'm telling you what they're doing. I'm telling you what's in their heart. He says, and he that burned incense, look at his mentality, as if he blessed an idol. So you got a guy with the wrong thought, burning incense to the Lord, and you're acting like this is like, a, like the Lord. He sees the Lord as an idol God. Y'all got me? Watch the different thoughts line up, and you go back and look at it and study more. He's looking at it like, you know, man, you know, man, this ain't nothing but, you know, what they say is God, you know. That's how Jeroboam says, here's a golden calf, this is who delivered you. It's like, hold on, man. No, your mind, the way you think, you must understand why you're taking the Lord's Supper we take. I'm taking the Lord's Supper, and I'm telling them, I'm one with you. I only eat your word. I only drink your spirit, the meaning. Well, you got another thought in your mind. And I said, man, you like looking at me like I'm some type of an idol. Well, they burn their sister, their gods, and the fifth son. Dude, this is the God of heaven. Yes, you burn this. We use a Bible. They use Bibles in faith churches, too. Mm -hmm. But we are saying, okay, no, 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 no. This is the only church. See, you got a lot of teachers in the church of Christ that have this mentality. Church of Christ is the best church. No, the church of Christ is the only church. See, they have a problem with us saying church of Christ. Okay, let's just say church. How about we just say the church? The Baptist church is not the church. The Catholic church is not the church. So all we need to do is say the church is the only church. So we just leave it there. Now, who do you think the people of God are? Mm -hmm. He needs to answer that. Because this guy's burning incense in his heart, his mind is like, it's just an idol. <laughs> He's just another person to worship like Mole. Mm -hmm. The Lord has a problem because the thoughts are not lining up with his thoughts. And so he says, yea, they have chosen their own way. See how they're dealing with it. And they're so delighted in their abomination. So they'd be like, man, y'all burn this to him. Well, we, we burn this as well. Won't. But the mentality still has to be right. And so when you're burning incense, you're burning something to serve the Lord. Your mind has to be right. If you don't have a contrast where you don't tremble at the Lord's word. This individual's mind has to line up with the Lord's thought. What is the purpose? What is my sacrifice for? You're blessed. Are you, you, so you're burning incense to an idol. If you're burning incense to a real idol, then you think you're blessing it? Is that in your mind? So if you take all these thoughts and line them up, and your mind 
feels like you can go and distribute this to a fake God to do these things. It's just a different sin. You're a different type of sinner. One comes to the Lord. He has the wrong thoughts. One goes to the false God. He has the wrong thought because it is a false God. He says, I also will choose their delusion. Look what he said. I will choose your delusions, your devices, and will bring their fears upon them. So the thing that you fear, he says, okay, I'm going to choose it. I'm going to choose it. Okay, you scared of, of dying of disease? Okay, I'm going to choose that. I'm going to cause you having you let that fear hang over you. Because when I called, none did answer. He says, when I spake, they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and choose that which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. There goes the righteous, your brethren that hated you. Look at this. I know we've experienced this. They cast you out for my name's sake. Now notice this. So see, now you tremble at the Lord's word. What do they do to you? They cast you out the temple. They cast you out. Now, we don't want to work with you, you know, because you come and your mind is actually lining up with God's thoughts. You're not at the idol's house. You're at the house of God, but your mind is right. They pick up on that. They listen to your speech. Man, we hate him. He's always bringing up stuff. She always got to be talking about stuff. She thinks she's am at the temple. That's all right. He says, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. He points it out. He's clear. A voice of noise from a city, a voice from a temple, a voice of the law that rendered recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who had heard such things? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Watch this teaching. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Mm. So shall I bring to the birth and to cause to bring forth. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth. Let me read this right. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth. Lord said, if I bring it, it's going to be born again. This is talking about being born. Watch what he said. Said the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, said God, thy, thy God. Rejoice with you, Jerusalem, and be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all that you that mourn for her. That you may suck on the nourishment, be satisfied with the breast of her consolations. And you may milk out, my goodness, and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Zion is going to have these babies. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Watch this now. Then shall you suck, you shall be born upon her side, and be dang upon her knee. It's going to be like having babies born, put the baby on the knee, dangling the mother had a baby. Zion having these babies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The Lord is coming through him on this day. He's going to slay that which will not believe and burp that which wants to be saved. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh. Look what they're doing. And the abomination and the mouse. They're eating mice. That was abomination to Israel. Shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Hide behind a tree. For I know their works and their thoughts. See? Wrong thoughts again. Will not take the Lord's word. Wrong thought. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues. And they shall come and see my God. That, now you know that's nothing but Pentecost. We talk about, you know, these babies going to be birthed. And everybody in the room that says, oh man, we love her. Have your baby Zion. 3,000 started out on that day. Birth. And I will set a sign among them and I will send those that escape of them into the nations. Watch how he sends people out to Tarshish, Paul, and Lud that draw the boat to Tubal and Javon to the eyes of Father. That have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory. They shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Look at that, man. God, God said, this, this is my thoughts. I'm going to tell you all my thoughts in the beginning. 
They're going to get a detail when it happens. That's why Peter said, this is what Joel was talking about. They have no idea what's happening. Tom Speed, oh, they drunk. He said, this is what Joel was talking about. It's time to make the specifics now. And Peter does an excellent job being God by the Holy Ghost. He says, they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and litters upon mules, upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel unto the house of the Lord. He's going to bring, man, all these people came, we coming, we coming to hear about salvation, and we're going to get it. He says, and I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die. You see that text? There it is. See, brethren, that's how the law says in that mess. That's my thoughts. Let me tell y'all what I'm going to do. Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Now you see, okay, I thought those damn was going the wrong way. No, those damn are going the wrong way. The Lord is saying, this is going to be the end. From the beginning to the end, this is what I'm bringing. That's why you see them quoting Isaiah in the New Testament, because he said, man, Isaiah laid down some heavy stuff. Sister Fletcher. Yeah. Right here in verse 22, when it says, for as a new heaven and a new earth, the Jehovah's Witness, they take that literally. They don't yes. take it for the reason, the metaphor that it is. Yes. And they think when this earth is done, God going to make a new one. That makes no sense when he says flesh cannot inherit the kingdom. Right. So why would he bring flesh back again? That makes no sense. No sense at all. So it's a God. Man, you know what's crazy about that is that they have to understand is he, he could just clean us in baptism and let us stay here. He's already washed the earth. <laughs> you know. So, see, you know, and that's wonderful. God bless you for saying that because we know and understand that we have encountered this individual group of people that uh, propagate false information, but the Lord's word will not falter. He says it's going to happen, and he is clear. And that's why you see those key words, worm, die, not, he's okay, it's going to be the end. He said, you're going to see, because he said that sword's coming through. Well, don't be saved, I'm coming. And you're going to die. And you're going to be great. And they're going to see your carcass. See, they're going to take that literally. Where the dead bodies at? No, no. See, we got the comprehension. And that's why Isaiah makes it specific. That's why you see Isaiah 53 talking about Jesus. Isaiah's that prophet talking and talking. But the idea the specifics are found in the New Testament. So this is the hope. This is the gospel. This is the good news. But as Paul said, it was not mixed with faith. It was not mixed with faith. That's why Peter calls us priests. I said, they think, oh, he's going to be real Levite priest. No, uh uh, he's going to preach. Yeah, I was just going to ask a question on uh, Isaiah 66, uh, verse 17, where it says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. I was just trying to get a maybe an idea concerning uh, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens. Behind one tree in the midst. Can you just like elaborate a little bit on that? Amen. Thank you, my brother. I'm going to read. That's a good That's a good one. I'm going to read that word, sanctify. Because the word sanctify means to separate. And sometimes when we see it, you know, thank you, Brother Free. I'm glad you mentioned that. We may think, okay, that means holy. No, because if they're eating that, they're definitely not going to be some holy people. So these individuals, they are like the people that Ezekiel was shown. These individuals, they separate themselves from the righteous to do abomination. And so as he's teaching and preaching this, he's also talking to Israel too. That's why Paul says, did not Israel hear? Well, they heard the portion of the gospel that's for them, but the futuristic part they didn't experience. So that is 6617. They sanctified themselves. 6942. Kadash 6942. Pronounce our observer is clean. These individuals. These individuals, look at the different means here. Ceremony or morally, they dedicate to keep holy, to place, to purify, to prepare holistically, uh, to clean. So these individuals, what they're doing is they're separating themselves. But look at what these are eating. These are eating things that are abominable. So what does he say? They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves and the goddess 
behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the moths, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So these will be destroyed because these individuals think that they can hide themselves. Remember we talked about earlier in chapter 65 that they sacrifice in the gardens. They separate themselves and do abominations, but they think, okay, that's what they said, stay away from us. Remember the, the, the uh, accusation? They said, we are holier than you. Remember that statement from Isaiah 5? We be holier than you. And that's not the case. The Jews try to come up with ideas to separate themselves and create new things. Just like Muslims come up with this eating halal and different things. They want to try to create a new system. Well, the Jews decided we're going to do things different. That's why Jeroboam says we got two gold calves. We're not going down there to worship. We're going to worship, but we're not going to worship like them. He creates a whole, another whole system. One of the kings had an altar built and he would sacrifice on that altar, but when he really wanted to talk to the Lord, he go to the Lord's altar, but he moved it to the back. And so these individuals, they're not doing this to make you think that they're worse than you. They're telling you, we're better than you. And that's what the, the statement is made in the sixth fifth chapter. We are holier than you. Stay away from us. And so now he says, I'm going to show you, I'm going to destroy them. He said, they will be destroyed together. He says, for I know their works and their thoughts. Verse 18, it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. He says, I know what these are doing. They're doing these things on the side, laying claim as if they're separating themselves and making themselves holy. But what did Job say? Who can make an unclean thing clean? They can't make themselves clean. They think that mouse makes them better. They think this stuff makes them better. They think we sanctified and you not. And so that's why they make the claim, stay away from us, you know, because we are holier. Look at 65 and verse 5. Watch this. It says, now let's look at verse 4. Look at what they're doing. Isaiah 65, 4, which remain among the graves and lodge in the mountains, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me. For I am holier than us. See, they think, man, we're holier than you. you. We're separating ourselves from you. We're better than you. These are smoking my nose and a fire burn. It's like, man, it's, you guys are nothing, man. You guys are nothing. And you're telling my people, stay away from you. You can't create a new system. And what do we have in the church of Christ today? A new system being created. A new system of either playing instruments or sounding like an instrument. Women reading scriptures. Women having more work to do in the church. I remember what brother said years ago. We need to look at, at a, broader, a broader work for women to do. See, he's letting you know. And then he'll tell you, we holier than you. We're separating ourselves from y'all. We don't do what y'all do. We're not going to church. Online worship is holy. It is, clear be, it is clear because God is everywhere. And see, they're telling you, as they said during the pandemic, y'all are sending for coming to church. Y'all violating Romans 13. Y'all risking people's lives. God loves his people. He would not cause his people to die needlessly. And see, they separate themselves. And these are doing the same thing. Because this word, they're saying, we are separate from you. So stay away from us. But we know that they want to make claim to be hallowed. But if they were holy and hallowed, God bless you. They were holy and hallowed. The law would not destroy them. But he says in verse 17, they will be consumed together, for I know their works and their thoughts. See, he's looking at their thoughts, too, is that they think that they can tell my people, we're better than you, we're cleaner than you, we're more pristine than you. And you eating, stop here now, brother, you gotta look, and you eating a mouse? Look at the list of this food. You eating a swine, friend. a known thing, and understood easy without any high tech. That we don't eat mice, we don't eat swine flesh, the abomination, we don't eat that. But they, they were telling them, we're holier than you. And you got to say, what? If we don't watch it, brethren, they would do the same thing today. They would tell us, like the brethren said, we don't need a preacher. I'm not saying because I'm an evangelist, I'm not the only one preaching. Like the brother at the other church said, we don't need evangelists. But look what he said, brother William, brother report. You guys are denominational by having an event. Now, you know, brethren, that's in the Bible. So he's, he's eating mice 
and hog telling us that we're greater than you. You guys are the ones who are doing wrong. Y'all denominational having an evangelist? Oh my goodness, man. With the scripture there. Yeah, you know, and this comes from uh, Leviticus 11. Okay. Where it says, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. God, to have part the hoof, and his clove footed, chew the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or them that divide the hoof as a camel, because he cheweth not the cud. He cheweth the cud, but divided not the hood. He is unclean unto you. So he goes through a list of animals God here. God bless you. But what's that scripture? And so okay. Leviticus 11. Leviticus 11. 1 through brother, 3. Remember that one. And so verse 46 says, This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of the li every living creature that moves in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and clean, mm -hmm. between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Mm -hmm. And so... He says here as well concerning to know the difference between those two, mm -hmm. you know, so they can know what the difference is. We know in Timothy it describes that, you know, you could eat any animal now. That's right. But uh, the main one of the main points is to make a difference between the clean and unclean. And so the, today is today doctrine is um, we have to know the difference between clean and unclean. That's right. Because if it's from earth. It's unclean. It's, uh -huh. It didn't come from heaven. Uh -huh. So the clean is what we see written, right? It divided. Uh -huh. The unclean is what man made. That's right. You know, whether, whether it be um, tithing, uh -huh. you know, because they're grabbing it from the old law, but it's now carnal because it's not spiritual anymore. It's not from heaven for the New Testament, uh -huh. you know, or whether it be calling yourself reverend or playing instrumental music. All that is, is unclean to God because it's not the worship that he... He's asking for. God bless you, preacher. Thank you, Javier. Man, that's good. I'm so glad that brother found that test because I couldn't recall it. God bless you. And see, and you, you see how he swung it to today. And, you know, people look at us, brethren, and just don't be discouraged. God bless you because your soul just fighting. But do you see, and we'll stop here, you know, we'll talk some more about this again. But thank you, brother. Fred. Do you see the boldness? You're eating, the brother just read, you're eating a mouse. <laughs> you telling the saints, stay away from us. We're holy. You got a mouse in your hand, man. Get out of your mind. And if you don't watch it, the mind will gravitate to, well, are they successful? They seem to be doing good. And your mind will just, like me and the guy was talking about today, I said, no, it's not about success. It's not about helping people. You cannot be saved with works. There's no works you can do to be saved. I said, what will you do if you sin? And he looked. I said, what will you do if you sin? I said, who removes that? Not your good works. I said, so the idea is, that's why the law says it's not by the good work. People think they can save themselves by doing good work. Because as we talked, he would always come back to square one. It's about doing good. This is, brethren, you know better than I do. You've been talking about the gospel longer than me. Listen, everybody at the end comes to the conclusion. It's about loving each other. Helping you. But the Lord says you're not saved by the traditions of your fathers. You cannot be saved this way. And I know you know that better than me. And so the idea when you see this, the thought has to be right. The thought has to be right. The mentality. Why am I taking a loss? Why am I giving? Am I to tithe? No, I'm not a Jew. And so with those different thoughts in mind, God bless y'all. This has been a wonderful study. And continue to help the world to see this. When we read the text, we get the thoughts of God. Who gets it though? Those of a contrite spirit. Those who tremble at the word. When your heart, brethren, you're reading, your heart is like, man, I sure want to get this point, Lord. I just want to get it because I don't want to be lost. The Lord, no, they say, I'm going to give it to you. You're going to get it. Don't worry. I'm going to help you. And because he loves you and he loves me. And that's the idea to understand. So God bless you. First Corinthians 15. We understand the Bible teaches us, verse 1 through 4, Christ died, was buried the third day. He rose again, according to the scripture, foretold in advance. We see in Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized, verse 16, shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 36. What does the book say? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus when you crucified two things. Both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said, repent, got the change, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the mission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you, 
to his children and all that are far. Even in the middle of the Lord, I got your call. In the other words, he's testifying as all saying, Save yourselves from the sun to all generation. Then they that gladly receive his word of baptized, the same day they were added unto them, about 3,000 souls. They contend steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, and prayers. Who asked to the church? Acts 2 47. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Acts chapter 8 is for the great and small, the Ethiopian eunuch. Verse 35. Philip begins oddly. In the book of Isaiah, where he was already read. Amen. And he teaches him about Jesus Christ. And when he sees the water, the Bible says, he said in verse 36, Was well, the enemy to be baptized? Philip said, If you believe in all your heart, you may. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, hated by the Muslims, but loved by the righteous. They, he said, They will come up to this water. Philip baptizes the unit. Because they both go down to the water. Verse 30, both Philip and you and he baptized him. Now the Lord has blessed his soul as Charles Curtis was, and others have been blessed, and he's rescued. Would it save me? Yes. Why? First Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Gentile, bond or free. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. How does it save my soul? How is that possible? Because the Holy Ghost does it. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. For the Jew and Gentile bond are free. And have all been made to drink in one spirit. Why is that needed to be repeated, brethren? If you don't take the Holy Ghost in and baptism, you're none of his. Romans chapter 8. Peter says, 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure wise that even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone on to heaven, angels, authorities, and powers, be made subject unto him. You know, the devil will try to shake and say, yeah, but if I get a hold of you, I got you. No, he doesn't. Because you call on the law, verse 10 of Revelation chapter 2, for none of thing without shall suffer. The devil shall cast some into prison. That you may be tried. He wants to test you. Don't fail the test, brethren. Shall tribulation ten days be our faithfulness then I will give you a crown of life. Just be faithful. Stay faithful. Do what the Lord say. That's all you got to do in here. Rescue. If you need prayer, let us know now. If you need to be baptized, stay standing where you sit down. If you need to be baptized, also press a little V-shaped object under the title. But the free to set up several phone numbers will show you where to go. That you might be baptized and be saved no matter where you live. If you need prayer also. You call that number. No matter what you're about to go, you're about to take your life. Stop. Please call the numbers. Call the saints up. Talk to us. You're about to take your baby's life because some fool doctor has told you abortion is your only route out. Call the saints of God. Call those numbers. We will connect you with people that can counsel with you. We will talk to you right on the phone while you are talking to us and help you make the right decision. Whatever you need, come now together. We stand and sing Evans' invitation. Oh, do not let the word depart and, and close the eyes against the light. Oh, sinner, harden not your heart. Be saved, oh, tonight. Oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Will you love me? Why not, why not tonight?